I worry for um, the older LGBTQ plus community who uh, have their own struggles, um, a lot of them being, you know, having having health problems that makes them more vulnerable to this pandemic and also the um, disabled community within the LGBTQ plus community because people within that that intersection are also more vulnerable and often get forgotten and I've come out to intimate friends and family members and I've come out quite publicly on the radio and um, it never gets easier because as we do like to think that we live in a you know really progressive inclusive society hate crime towards our community is rising Pride means um, being comfortable in who I am. It means being able to feel proud of who I am and, and walking outside with my head held high, knowing that I've got nothing to be ashamed about, knowing that I'm fully accepted by myself. Shivani, um, Shivani Dave, and my preferred pronouns are they or them or theirs. And um, I am a journalist. I currently work for the BBC, and I also produce a podcast called The Logbooks, which um, looks at LGBTQ plus history and has discussions about what it means to be LGBTQ plus today. I think every single area of our community um, has specific issues whether it's um, someone who is 15 and unable to have the language to identify how they feel yet and, and don't have the space to be able to explore and navigate that part of themselves just yet because they're at home um, and they, they don't have the ability to to meet people and speak to people who understand their identity um, that's that's one thing, but I also think that I worry for um, the older LGBTQ plus community who uh, have their own struggles. Um, a lot of them being, you know, having having health problems that makes them more vulnerable to this pandemic, and also the um, disabled community within the LGBTQ plus community because people within that that intersection are also more vulnerable and often get forgotten and, and, and don't get thought about as part of the picture. And then hearing on the news about all of the risk factors that you are exposed to, plus the fact that we are BAME people and BAME people have a higher risk of catching coronavirus or a higher risk of getting sick from it, um, it's all quite worrying and quite morbid to, to turn on the news and hear that you're at risk for all of these factors in your life that you can't control and then to also be completely isolated from people um, who are part of your community um, and, and potentially having to live at home with families that don't accept you or don't understand your identity. Um, it can add extra layers of pressure onto onto um, what you're feeling and the anxieties that you've got at the moment. And I know from conversations with friends and just personal experiences that none of this is very helpful um, when we've all got lives that have their own normal daily stresses um, and none of those stresses have gone away. In fact, they've all kind of just been put under a microscope at the moment. In 2020, you'd like to think that nobody has to feel like they need to uh, hide who they are or live in the closet so to speak but it's it's more complicated than that because for some people it takes a really long time to understand their identity and for some people it takes 
a really long time to admit that to themselves once they've started to understand it and uh, then it becomes a whole process of, of coming out if that's something that you want to do and choose to do and feel safe enough to do. I've come out every day since the first time because it's a process that we do over and over and over again and I've come out to intimate friends and family members and I've come out quite publicly on the radio and um, it never gets easier because as we do like to think that we live in a you know really progressive inclusive society hate crime towards our community is rising and um, it, there is always a fear that the person that you're talking to is not going to receive that information um, quite so positively. Even if you know that they are going to be fully supportive of you deep down, you know that's the truth, but they, there's always a reason, there's always something in the back of your mind just thinking, but what if? Um, and there's always that fear and that for a lot of people is enough to keep them to stay quiet about their identity and to keep them from, from not expressing their gender identity or sexuality um, possibly as early on as, as they would have liked. Pride means so many different things to me. Pride means um, being comfortable in who I am. It means being able to feel proud of who I am and, and walking outside with my head held high and knowing that I've got nothing to be ashamed about, knowing that I'm fully accepted by myself and it's almost like sticking two fingers up at the rest of the world and saying it doesn't matter what you think of me because I know exactly who I am and what I mean and that's some this is something so empowering about that it would be an injustice if I didn't think about all of the people um, who came before me um, who allowed who paved the way to allow me to feel like this and it feels like sometimes I've got some of them you know just sat on my shoulder with me as I'm walking down the street listening to whatever the latest anthem is um, and just just knowing that these people have come before me and fought tooth and nail to, to get me to where I am today and that is that's what pride is for me but you know we do have a pretty rough ride of it some of the time and um, hopefully pride will one day be able to be a celebration of, of who we are and and where we belong in the world, which is everywhere, because we are everywhere. So I would really like to see Pride back in person, back with my my siblings and my friends and allies again. Um, but who knows, because we're a very adaptable community and if this goes on for a lot longer than any of us are expecting it to go on for, I'm sure we'll find ways to still be able to celebrate ourselves. I think a lot of different uh, LGBTQIA plus organisations um, include people who um, might be from, from one of those parts of the identity um, and people tend to group with the people that they associate most strongly with or have things in common with and a lot of the time um, you can find uh, whether it's you know, a, a pride committee or it's a grassroots organisation or it's a, um, I don't know, workplace uh, pride organisation, there, there will be groups within that sort of community that, that tend to gel more closely together and I think often um, we can constantly be worrying about our own um, the, the issues that we face with our own identities and, and the way the outside world sees us that the rest of the communities can be forgotten about. It's our responsibility as LGBTQ plus uh, people to be able to find a space for, for everyone because we know what it's like to be sitting on the outside looking in and not feeling like part of the group and um, knowing what that's like it would be really really nice if we could extend a hand to the people who might be feeling like that now um, as they are being sidelined or overlooked or, or underrepresented. 
as someone with uh, a, a, a voice in a privileged position working at BBC and and having a family that supports me, um, I, I understand that I have a lot of privilege that some other people don't have. And um, I'm really grateful for that. And hopefully I'm, I'm aware of that and conscious enough of that to be um, to be able to create space for other people and to be able to help other people share their voice and their story as much as possible um, and I would would like to hope that that is that is something that I've been good at being able to do um, and hopefully you know I will use my my voice and my platform and my uh, privilege to be able to encourage other people to feel like they're supported and and to encourage other people to to embrace who they are and and to get support that they need and that is hopefully my way of of being able to use the privileges that I have for good. I think we've all got a different hand of cards and while you know we are increasingly seeing um, LGBTQ plus people be more accepted in society. We're also seeing more hate crimes targeted towards us. And we're also seeing a lot more vocal hatred towards our community online. And, and um, even if those things don't particularly affect you and you're not experiencing them, um, I do believe that we as individuals um, might be getting told that we're more accepted than ever and living in a very progressive country and society, which is true to an extent, but there are internal factors to why we don't feel um, included and accepted. And those factors are based on the history that we've had to experience and the history of the people who've come before us. We have very real reasons for feeling unsafe in a lot of spaces. And so hopefully what um, I can do by being so public and visible um, in who I am and being so open talking about my gender identity and my sexuality, um, I, I just hope that I can carve out a little bit of space to make other people feel like there's this area where they, they can feel safe. I understand why a lot of people got upset when the rainbow flag was being used to represent the NHS or when, when the rainbow more specifically was being used to represent the NHS and I also understand why it was being used to represent the NHS because a rainbow is a symbol of hope and um, there were months earlier in this year when that's what a lot of us needed, we needed a symbol of hope. Um, you know, when it comes to the rainbow flag, I, I found that when I was first coming out, it was a really great identifier for me and it was a really great way of me being able to express my, my identity without, um, you know, worrying too much because the rainbow flag when it was I had a massive one that used to be wrapped around me as I went to Pride in London and it felt like armour, it felt like a safety blanket, it felt like home and it means a lot to me um, but we are also as the LGBTQ plus community moving on and progressing and now I find myself more drawn to uh, identifying with the progress flag that has that has trans inclusive and and black and brown stripes to indicate um, ethnic minority inclusivity as well and I think people want to take the rainbow for the NHS it doesn't mean that you know there's not enough rainbow for us knowing that at some point we will be out the other end from all of this and we'll be stronger for it and we'll appreciate the things that we um, we took for granted. The future feels like it's impossibly far away right now because it feels like there's a never-ending dark tunnel in front of me and um, I could go for miles and miles and miles and never get out the other side. But um, 
there is sort of an idea that we will come out of the pandemic and um, things probably won't go back to normal right away um, but there'll be ways to work around whatever we've experienced and whatever new rules they'll come up with and whatever new ways of having to adapt um, that's that's the rest of the future.